Greetings, members one and all of the Salvation Nation. Is gold becoming more mainstream among investors? That's the question. According to the World Gold Council, they're suggesting that that is exactly the case. This article comes to us from Coin World, and we're going to explore a little bit of this and also get into the report itself. Uh, because investment demand for gold has grown on average 15% annually since 2001, according to the World Gold Council. In its latest analysis of the gold market, the World Gold Council notes that downturns in the overall financial markets provide a boost to investing in gold as a safe haven to protect assets. The price of competing assets, such as bonds, through interest rates, currencies, and other assets influences investor attitude towards gold, according to the WGC. The financial gold market is made up of bars, coins, gold-backed exchange-traded funds, or ETFs, and central bank reserves. Physical gold holdings of 38,800 metric tons account for just 20% of the financial market holdings of the metals, and that's quite an interesting and staggering uh, report or statistic here. The, D the WGC suggests that 92,000 metric tons of physical gold is held worldwide in just jewelry form. The WGC estimates that physical gold holdings by investors and central banks are worth approximately $2.9 trillion in U.S. funds with an additional $400 billion dollars in open interest through derivatives trades on exchanges or over the counter. Quite interesting. Derivatives are not physical gold, but only contract claims against a counterparty, such as a broker or bank, which means there's risk because you are, that's one way that gold can have a counterparty risk is if you're dependent on a broker or bank or any, or any entity. Uh, uh, for which uh, that holds that gold for you as a custodian. Not, by the way, not that that's necessarily a bad thing in some cases. But really, in the end, what it boils down to is really, in a sense, you don't truly own it until you have it in your hands, until you, until you hold it. Um, gold trades between $50 billion U.S. and $80 billion per day, through spot and derivative contracts over the counter, according to the WGC. Gold futures trade $35 billion to $50 billion per day across various global exchanges. Gold backed ETFs offer an additional source of liquidity, with the largest US listed funds trading an average as $1 billion uh, per day US. And my guess is that shift into the uh, into gold is probably going to be more in the ETF side of things. And as I mentioned before, just as the case also with silver ETFs, GLD and SLV, those are, are entities that people can acquire and say, well, hey, I'm investing in gold or silver uh, without actually having to um, um, cash out in the physical metal itself. More than likely, people are not going to liquidate for the metal. They're going to liquidate for cash. Um, so there are people that invest in gold and silver, in a sense, using that term loosely, um, and may never ever see the metal or care to see the metal. Uh, and I think that may be kind of what it's going at. But let's take a look here a little bit about some of the report here. Um, back to here, this gold hub, and it talks about it as uh, the relevance of gold, relevance of gold as a strategic asset. Quite an interesting article here. It's a highly liquid yet scarce asset, and it's no one's liability. It is bought as a luxury good as much as an investment. As such, gold can play four fundamental roles in a portfolio: a source of long-term returns. A diversifier that can mitigate losses in times of market stress. A liquid asset with no credit risk that has been outperformed uh, fiat currencies and a means to enhance overall portfolio performance. Our analysis shows that additional 2%, 5%, or 10% in gold over the past decade to the average pension fund portfolio would have resulted in higher risk adjusted returns. 
goes on to say, why gold and why now? Gold is becoming more mainstream. Since 2001, investment demand for gold worldwide has grown on average 15% per year. This has been driven in part of the advent of new ways to access the market, such as physical gold-backed exchange traded funds, as mentioned before, and also by the expansion of the middle class in Asia and a renewed focus on effective risk management following the 2008-2009 financial crisis in the U.S. and in Europe. Today, gold is more relevant than ever for institutional investors, while central banks and developed markets are moving to uh, normalized monetary policies leading to higher interest rates, we believe that investors may still feel the effects of quantitative easing and the prolonged period of low interest rates for years to come. I will say that, yes, even though we're in a, technically in a quantitative tightening period, you know, the effects of it really have never really been fully, have never fully materialized. And I think that's going to come back to bite us when the next recession hits. Why some people feel the next recession uh, coming, uh, we'll see a further decline in faith in the dollar, which could, uh, you know, profound, make the effects more profound uh, in the next recession. These policies have may have fundamentally altered what it means to manage portfolio risk and could extend the time needed to meet investment ob objectives. In response, institutional investors have embraced alternatives to traditional assets such as stocks and bonds. The share of non-traditional assets among global pension funds has increased from 15% in 2007 to 25% in 2017. And in the U.S., this figure is close to 30%. Many investors are drawn to gold's role as a diversifier due to its low correlation to, almost, to most mainstream assets. And as a hedge against systematic risk and strong stock market pullbacks, some use it as a store of wealth and as an inflation and currency hedge. And that's exactly right. But the thing is, as most of us in this community, um, we are suspect of the paper markets, the electronic, um, the ETFs that are out there for both gold and silver, uh, because we know, uh, but we just question and differ in opinion as to how much more of the paper market and the electronic market than there is the physical. That could pose a strong problem uh, when when uh, there's account of, where there needs to be an accounting as such. And no one has really at least shown and many of us in the community any kind of accountability in that in that in that measure. Really I do believe that for the investors um, and I use that term loosely again because precious metals, I don't see them as, as investments. They are hedges against systematic risk, against, against economic instability. But when is somebody in the financial community in Wall Street or what have you going to ask for some sort of an audit, an oversight of these ETFs? Um, wishful thinking for sure, but I think once you really get that, then those ETFs will hold a lot more value uh, because they will actually will be backed by the physical for sure. As your the article or the report goes on to say, as a strategic asset, gold has historically improved the risk-adjusted returns of portfolios, del delivering returns while reducing losses and providing liquidity to meet liabilities in times of stress. And it says a source of returns here. It's not only used in periods of higher uncertainty. Its price has increased by an average of 10% per year since 1971. We're going to take a look at some charts here. And when gold began to freely trade following the collapse of Bretton Woods. And gold long-term returns have been comparable to stocks and higher than bonds or commodities. We'll see that in the chart below. It's a good reason behind gold's price performance. It trades as a, as a large and liquid market, yet it is scarce. Mine production has increased by an average of 1.4% per year for the past 20 years. At the same time, consumers, investors, and central banks have all contributed to higher demand. Uh, but it doesn't say what that demand is, is in comparison to the, uh, to the, mint, uh, to the mine production. I think that's important. On the consumer side, the combined share of global uh, gold demand from India and China grew from 25% in the early 1990s to more than 50% in recent years. 
The research shows the expansion of wealth is one of the most important drivers of gold demand over the long run, and it's had a positive effect on jewelry, technology, and bar and coin demand, the latter in the form of long-term savings. So here we see that gold has delivered positive returns, outperforming key asset classes. So gold is the, is the, is the far right, the brown here. And we can see compared to co other commodities, it's just a little bit behind. And uh, some of the stocks since 1971, this is the one to pay attention to. Uh, this is the one to pay attention to if you're looking at it as an investment. That's right, as an investment. Um, that's key because as a long term, you know, um, as a holding, and you are preserving your wealth. And you look at it, 10.45% return. How do you equate that as an investment? Well, look at the dollar. Look how the dollar is lost. That's why I don't see it as an investment because it is merely money and it is a hedging and protecting yourselves. And really, with anything, if you look at all the other things compared to cash, bonds, uh, and U.S. stocks, you know, it's really, I don't know. I, well, I mean, look here, cash as an investment. You know, it's grown 4.92 percent. That's that's basically if you put it into CDs or money markets or some sort of safe, safe asset, basically working off of itself. You know, it's provided just under five percent um, with these returns. But so, anyways, that's kind of where I see it. You know, these things and none of these things, stocks or anything like that, have have really posted much of a return which means that gold is the ultimate safe haven to protect yourself with no counterparty risk. You know, pretty amazing. So let's go just 20 years ago. And you see here we have injected into this EM stocks and have provided the best return at 13.59% uh, there. Um, it's the indices there. So it's definitely the best performing with a gold at uh, just above 8% at second best over 20 years. So see, the long-term gold has done very well. And then even over 10 year, even though it's way down the list compared to the stock market, which most of us agree has been greatly overinflated. And But look here, EM stocks is down and, um, and EAFE stocks down 7.4%. The bond market is obviously way down there and cash is obviously doing next to nothing, especially considering where the interest rates have been pretty much pressed down to zero with the Fed, what it's been doing lately. Uh, additionally, investors have embraced gold back ETFs and similar products to get exposure to gold. Gold back ETFs have amassed more than 2,400 tons of gold worth $100 billion since they were first launched in 2003. And since 2010, central banks have been net buyers of gold in order to expand their foreign reserves as a means of diversification and safety. So it's been well above inflation during the gold standard, the subsequent, sub, subsequently the Bretton Woods system. Then when the U.S. dollar was backed and pegged to the price of gold, there was a close link between gold and U.S. inflation. But once gold became free-floating, U.S. inflation was not its main price driver. Sure enough, gold returns have outpaced the U.S. consumer price index over the long run due to its many sources of demand. But gold has not just preserved capital, it has helped it grow. And... Uh, so it's helping help, help protect investors against extreme inflation. In years when inflation has been higher than 3%, gold's price has increased 15% on average. Additionally, research shows that Oxford Economics shows that gold should do well in periods of deflation. That's interesting. So let's see how this chart shows here. Nominal return and a real return. Uh, so yeah, gold in relation to U.S. dollars and functions of annual inflation. So quite interesting indeed. It'd be interesting to see where silver lies in this. My guess is probably gold uh, does better in this area because it is treasured and it's not quite as volatile. Gold, silver kind of is more all over the place. And again, it's its rules of duality metal there. But and then a, hard, a high quality, hard currency. Gold has outperformed all major fiat currencies over time. No brainer on this one for sure. Look at gold here. Boom. Uh, all these currencies are relative to gold as the standard. And look at there, especially since 1980. Fascinating to see how they've declined over the years. This is quite a telling graph. Look at that. How low these things are and where gold is. And, you know, we're living on borrowed time with the, with the currencies. 
And I think the only reason why these currencies, the fiat designated system, not backed by anything but the faith, is uh, is is simply because of the faith we have in them. We're just kicking the can down the road with our debt and everything else. But uh, so this is kind of good news if this is re report is correct. And, uh, and it talks about diversification here. And looking at this uh, with this gold and other commodities, we can see here that it is certainly competing well against the S&P and others. Uh, fascinating indeed. It's a liquid market. Gold trades more than any other major financial assets. And I think that's going to only continue to improve, especially with the blockchain and with digital uh, backing of these things. And I think that's kind of where the future is. The ETFs and everything, that's going to kind of shift over to where you can actually track it. And if you can track it to the physical and have the faith in that, then I think that's going to be something to really see where this is going to pick up in, in years to, have, to come and really, really uh, be a better competitor uh, compared to some of these other asset classes down the road here. And, uh, it's um, so there's more charts and graphs that kind of talk more about this, but um, let's take a look here and see the uh, risk adjusted risk of hypothetical portfolio across various levels of risk. <coughs> you can see where gold lies in this here a long run optimal allocations based off the asset mix there and how much should be in your portfolio. <clears throat> and I still say that, folks. For those of you who do invest in other um, asset classes or in the stock market and other things like that where you can really get a, a, a higher return with increased risk, yeah, you know, use gold as a way to protect yourself. Don't overextend yourself in gold or anything like that. Uh, experts say anywhere between 5 and 20%. You know, for me, it's probably going to be a little bit more just because I don't really dabble in the stock market. I'm pretty risk averse. But nonetheless, there's no problem with people in the community or that are watching these videos that do have money in the markets, and they do well with them. And I certainly encourage that um, as long as you understand what you're getting into, and most of you guys do. You know, this the audience uh, of this channel is smart, and uh, for sure, you know a lot more about a lot of these other things than I do, for sure. But I think this is just a reminder, and again, understanding this has come from the World Gold Council, which is obviously bullish on gold, but you know, gold sells itself, silver sells itself. And in the end, I think it's encouraging and I do believe some of this report that yeah, especially with technology the way it's going and where things are, we, if it can be tracked, gold I think is becoming more attractive in, in portfolios, investment portfolios. Post your thoughts below, I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude y'all for watching and encourage you to please rate, comment and subscribe.